Hello guys and welcome to the Budding Watch Enthusiasts. Uh, I'm really excited <laughs> because this is the uh, the first review that I've gotten to do uh, with a watch that's been submitted to the channel. So, uh, very exciting day for me. Of course, uh, we are reviewing the brand new, all new, uh, NTH Nazario Sauro uh, watch uh, that is available exclusively through Watch Gauge uh, and also comparing it uh, with its older brother, the original. Nazario watch as well. So first up front, a big thank you to John Keel of Watch Gauge for loaning these two watches into the channel uh, for review. Thank you very much, sir. I do really appreciate it. Uh, watch Gauge is also the only place that you can buy the Nazario Sauro as well. I will leave a link to it in the description below if you were interested in picking up this watch for yourself. And uh, to you guys watching, fear not, just because the watch was loaned in does not mean that I'm gonna pull any punches. You are definitely gonna get uh, my very honest opinions on the Nazario Sauro here today. But before we look at the Nazario Sauro, uh, let's talk about NTH watches and the original Nazario in the first place. Uh, NTH is a micro brand company that was started by a gentleman by the name of Chris Vale. NTH, of course, is best known for their NTH sub watches, uh, which are modern dive watches that have very deliberate nods to vintage divers throughout history. Uh, the most best known of which is probably the NTH Nacken line. Now the Nazario is an interesting watch because this was a watch that was made as sort of a special edition of sorts and it is very heavily inspired by a very rare watch, the Rolex Xerograph, uh, which has actually been called the rarest Rolex on the planet. It's a watch that I really didn't know anything about until the Nazario appeared and a lot of people wondered where, uh, where the design aesthetic was from. And if you see the Rolex Xerograph, you can very clearly see uh, the inspiration with the original Nazario. Now the original Nazario was available in a very limited run and then they decided earlier this year to make the Nazario Sauro. So let's go to the desk and learn a little bit about the NTH Nazario Sauro. So let's start by doing a brief overview of the Nazario Sauro. Uh, let's start with the movement that's in this watch. This comes stocked with a Miyota 9015 movement inside of it. So that means you're getting a beat rate of 20,800 vibrations per hour uh, or eight ticks per second. So you get that nice smooth sweep of the seconds hand. Uh, it's got about a 42 hour power reserve as is common for this movement. And with the 9015, um, if we pull the crown out, uh, it is hackable as you see the second hand stop. Uh, and if we push it back in, it goes again. This is also normally a movement that has a date complication as well. Um, it does have the ghost position. So if you pull you know, the crown out to the first position, uh, the watch does not stop. And it does have the little date thing in there, but nothing will happen. You do have to pull it out all the way. Uh, to initiate the hacking feature, but just know that that ghost position is in there. Uh, the movement is rated for minus 10 to plus 30 seconds per day. Uh, happy to report that the one that's in this particular watch uh, is running at minus three, which is exceptional, quite frankly. If we go to the dimensions of the watch, uh, we have a case width of 40 millimeters, uh, a lug length of 48 millimeters, a height of only 11.5 meters, which is very impressive for a watch with a Miyota movement in it, and a strap width of 20 millimeters. So let's talk about this case uh, that this watch comes in. It is 316L stainless steel, uh, almost entirely brushed finish on here with the exception of this chamfered edge that runs down each side of the watch. Of course, you have these downward angled lugs uh, that have drilled lug holes in them. Another uh, very pleasant feature to see uh, on a watch in this price range for sure. It does have a very elegant and simple uh, screw down case back here. It's almost Tudor-esque in, in the way it's laid out uh, with just some very basic information and a couple NTH logos back here. And you do get an etched NTH logo in the crown here, uh, with, on the screw down crown, I should say, no crown guards on this case, uh, as you would expect from a vintage inspired sub. And the crown is loomed, which I will show you a shot of right here as well. And because you have the screw down crown, uh, this watch does provide up to 300 meters of water resistance. If we go into the dial, uh, we, this watch has the white uh, California style dial, of course the California dial 
uh, inspired by the Rolex Xerograph that the original Nazario was based on. Of course, a white dial, uh, black numerals, black markers, with those few touches and flourishes of red uh, that you see with both the NTH logo and the Nazario Sauro uh, text on the dial as well. A very simple uh, railroad style minute track runs along the outside of the dial. Now what's interesting here is you do have cathedral style hands uh, for the hour marker, uh, but much skinnier than you normally see. Normally that cathedral uh, leaf is a little bit fatter um, I actually I actually like that they decided to go with the skinnier hands here uh, just because it helps the dial be the main feature of the watch that you're looking at. Of course, you do see that gold seconds hand running around. A little bit odd because it is the only touch of gold that exists on the watch, uh, but that does help uh, legibility. It helps you see that seconds hand and contrasts it with the rest of the dial. If we move out to the bezel, uh, this is a stainless steel a uh, 120 click unidirectional bezel. It does have the minute track running along the entire outside of the bezel. Um, it does have a very, it, it's sort of a soft um, click as you turn it, but it, no back play. Uh, it does have this machined uh, style edge on the outside, which makes it very easy to grip and turn even when wearing gloves as I am right now. And of course the, the flourishes of red do extend to the bezel as well with the uh, red 30 minute marker and the markers at 15 and 45 plus the red triangle uh, at 12 o'clock which really does help assist with the legibility. And of course with the white dial version here of the Nazario, both the entire dial and all of the markers inside of the bezel are filled with loom which makes it very, very easy to see uh, in low light. Uh, for the bracelet, we do have an oyster style bracelet uh, that is completely done with a brushed steel finish. Uh, solid end links in this watch as well, and screwed links, uh, making it very, very easy to adjust if needed. And the clasp is a very sturdy clasp. Uh, it is a dual fold uh, clasp with a lock uh, that also has double pushers on the side, so this thing uh, is not going to be going anywhere when you have it on. Plus, it also has six, yes, count them, six micro adjustments uh, on the side of this thing, which makes it very easy uh, to get the perfect fit. And again, it does close and latch very solidly, and you get a little NTH logo uh, on the clasp lock there as well. And here is the Nazario Sauro on my 8-inch wrist. So it's a little, a, a shade small for me. Uh, my ideal dive watch size, I think, is anywhere between uh, 41 to 43 millimeters for the size of my wrist, but it looks fine on there. Um, this is a size that's comparable to my Squally 1545 that you guys have probably seen. Um, again, very comfortable. The bracelet is pretty comfortable. Um, the re You guys can see the reason that I don't typically go for white dialed watches is because my pale skin uh, looks washed out <laughs> with the white dialed watch, uh, which is something I'll talk about when I actually get to the review of the watch. But yeah, that's what it looks like. And again, uh, if you have an average size wrist or even a smaller size wrist, uh, this will probably work well for you. But again, my favorite part of this watch, look at that slim uh, profile with this, with, th with that height. Fantastic. It's elegant. It's my absolute favorite thing about it. And before we get into what I like and dislike about this watch, uh, let us let us compare it to its cousin, uh, the original Nazario watch. Of, of course, the original Nazario, a little bit busier of a dial. You do have that. Uh, it's, it's a little difficult to see. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see that diamond waffle pattern uh, that exists on the dial here. And of course, the original Nazario does have the uh, markers colored with the old radium style uh, Super Luminova, giving them a very vintage look. And that, of course, is a lot more uh, representative of the Rolex Xerograph that this watch is so heavily inspired from. A little bit, I mean, like I said, a little, I think the I think the Sauro is a little bit cleaner of a look. Uh, it's got a little bit less going on than the original Nazario, um, but it definitely a good contrast of options. I mean, the, the original Nazario is kind of tough to find at this point, but it, but it definitely enough of a contrast from uh, the original version. So let's talk about my thoughts on the Nazario Sauro. So my favorite parts of this watch are all of the parts that make it an NTH uh, sub. Of course, the first thing that I noticed with this watch, with all NTH subs, is the height. This is the only watch that I've ever seen that has a Miyota 9015 movement inside of it that is shorter than like 13 millimeters. I love the fact 
that this thing is so slim, has such a has such a short profile when wearing it on the wrist, it makes it feel a little bit more luxurious than the watch probably is. And it's a real attention to specificity to make the watch stand out among its competitors in its class. And, and I really appreciate that from the buyer standpoint. And, and really, the whole case on this watch is, is awesome as well. Just, again, the, the, the fine attention to detail that you see with the NTH subs, with these downward curving lugs, with the drilled holes, with the no crown guards, which I think is a little bit cleaner look and I think helps the watch just look a little bit more sleek and a little bit more stylish uh, than you see on most modern divers. And again, this, you know, this watch does have vintage inspiration and vintage styling, so I would expect to, to see those flourishes on there. But yeah, the, the case as a whole is just really phenomenal uh, on this watch, and, and that's true of any uh, NTH sub that's out there. Now, as far as the dial goes, um, I, I have some thoughts on it, but I will say that I think the balance on the dial on the Sauro is excellent, and even more so than the original Nazario. Like I said, the original Nazario has quite a bit going on uh, with the textured dial, with the radium-colored loom markers. Uh, the Sauro is, is just, like I said, it's a lot cleaner. Now, that being said, um, the Sauro, unfortunately, from the dial standpoint, just isn't for me. I don't tend to gravitate towards white dialed watches, um, partially because I have such pale skin. <laughs> they they kind of wash out my wrist, and they don't look very attractive on there. Um, and and I actually I really did pine after the original Nazario when I originally saw it. But then after getting to experience it a little bit, after getting to use it, I realized it's just a little bit too too busy for my taste for what's going on. I guess I like a more conservative uh, dial layout when I'm using a dive watch. And I think the Saro does actually help that. It, it, it's a little bit, I think I like it a little bit more just because it is a little bit less busy. It is a little bit more calm thanks to the monochrome aesthetic, but the the fact that it is has that monochrome flavor with the white and primarily black, with just those few flourishes of red, does, you know, the sacrifice there is that the watch dial looks a little bit less lively uh, than it does on the original Nazario watch. The other big uh, drawback in my mind is is the bracelet with this watch. And not that there's anything wrong with the bracelet, it's definitely quality, um, it's, it's very nice, but it, it kind of just feels like an afterthought. I mean, for a watch that has a very deliberate design, it looks like that the the bracelet was just kind of thrown in there and just like, yeah, you know, we're just going to put the, a traditional style bracelet on there and call it a day. I think it really would have been cool to see like an engineer style bracelet like you see often with the Rolex Xerographs, uh, the few of them that are out there uh, that you see pictures of online. I think that would have been a really neat way to make the Nazario stand out uh, from the other NTH subs, aside from the very unique dial and, and bezel layout, of course. The biggest advantage, though, I think that this watch has, though, and, and one of the things that I found interesting when I posted uh, the unboxing video of this watch on the channel is a lot of you guys hated it. Uh, it was it was actually really polarizing when I first posted this video. And I think that's actually one of the things that I enjoy the most about the watch. Because the fact that it is polarizing, I think, is a huge positive. I did a video uh, a few months back where I talked about micro brands and the things that I really liked about them. And one of the things that I mentioned is that micro brands are able to take more chances and are able to do a lot of different things that larger watch companies aren't able to do because they're playing to a much smaller crowd and a much smaller buyer base. I think the fact that the Nazario Sauro even exists is a huge positive just because it's great to have watches out there that do have such bold design, that do have such deliberate, uh, deliberate design aesthetics that aren't going to appeal to everybody because this doesn't have to appeal to everybody. They only made, I think, like a hundred of these. Um, and so as long as you can find a hundred people that like it, that's, that's really all you need. And that's what's cool about it. And what's even better about it is that if you don't like the Nazario Sauro, but you do like the NTH subs, there's a ton of different options for you. NTH makes a lot of different, uh, 
Submariner, you know, vintage Submariner style dive watches, and chances are that they have a design that you'll really like. And again, I think that the NTH features, the thin case, the you know, the Miyota movement, the attention to detail uh, in the design, I think those are the strongest features of the Nazario Salro. And again, what I'm coming away with from this review after getting to spend time with these watches is that while the Nazario isn't the watch for me personally, I can tell you unequivocally uh, that I can't wait to own a different NTH sub at some point. The Sauro is in it, but it might be for you, and that's and that's really all that matters. And and again, I I love the fact that this watch even exists, that they that they decided to even do it. You know, the fact that they made this watch heavily inspired by a design of a Rolex watch, you know, lost to history that even watch hobbyists may have never heard of before. Again, these are available exclusively through the Watch Gauge store. Uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And again, a big thank you uh, to John Keel and Watch Gauge for loaning this watch in and letting me review it. I really appreciate it. So folks, that is all for this week's video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you could, if you found this video entertaining or informative, do me a favor, hit the like button down there below. Also, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, thanks for checking it out. If you could, uh, if you enjoyed what you see, hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. That way you never miss an episode of The Budding Watch Enthusiast. And of course, I am on Instagram, uh, always looking for a follow there, at Budding Watch Enthusiast. You can find me on there. Again, guys, thank you very much for watching. I will see you the next time.